Hello everyone. Today we have Shamlu Tudeja and she's going to be telling us her stories of Sindh about embroidery and mathematics, her family's peer and what she saw at the Sindh assembly on the historic day of 14th August 1947. Hello Shamlu. Lovely to see you. Welcome to the Tapestry podcast and I can see you're sitting in a really lovely place so why don't we start by you telling me what it's about. Where I'm sitting. Okay, it's our uh, Kanta showroom. Tell me which year were you born? 38. And uh, you were of course you lived in Karachi as a child. I was uh, my father studied in Karachi and South Africa and came back to Karachi and he taught in DJ Sin College. My mother was a huge, uh, what is the word, skilled embroidery person. She was a very, very high parts embroidery person. And, and I remember one of those very important things. In 19, we came from Karachi in 1947. And uh, sometime, I think perhaps when we came to Delhi, um, I remember mummy and her friends. We used to have a, they used to have a square uh, wooden frame, big one, with nails all over. Four women sit around the thing. And uh, they would have uh, multiple threads, you know, like a scheme. And they would go from here to there and come back and go again and come back and go again and come back. And the two women here, they would go in and out and in and out and in and out. So and weaving, they, weaving, weaving uh, uh, yeah. table tops. Weave, um, so, wow, what was the uh, thread they used? From what I can remember, they you they used threads from the parachutes, old parachutes. Wow. And did they also use the material, the pa- parachute uh, cloth? I don't remember anything else, but the only thing I remember that these were parachute, multiple threads. This was not a single thread, four or five, like a scheme. And then they would go like this and like that. What did they do with the cloths they made? They used it. You know, like if you had a table of that size or you made a a tablecloth of the size of the table you had. And they would spread it on that. Nice. So they are obviously very uh, creative and very, very skilled with their fingers. Well, they were, my, my, my mother especially was very creative. She used to knit. She used to acting, crochet, crochet, crochet. She used to do that. And she had a sewing machine in Karachi. Uh, right. Uh, uh, an imported sewing machine. I'm trying to think of the name. Was it a German Pfaff machine? Yeah, German Pfaff. Pfaff. P A F A. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And tell me about your school because you grew up at a time when um, the freedom struggle was, uh, you know, so big in Sindh. So how was that? I went to a Sindhi medium school. Uh, where Alaf Bey, Pay, etc., we used to learn. And of course, my father would take me for a walk. We we had seen the assembly on one side and the triangular park across the road on the other side. So daddy, daddy, since he was teaching in a college, he'd be home by three o'clock or something. And then he'd take me for a walk. And I would uh, um, I was taught to, to say. 17, 18 times tables by daddy. <laughs> How, old How old were you? How old were you, Shamdu? How old were you then when he was teaching you 17 under and 18? Nine. Under, under nine. nine. Oh, yeah. Well done, Eight. Rupo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, what was the question? Uh, I said, you know, I remember you School, once yeah, telling okay. me about that Hardevi who was a, a freedom yeah. fighter whose school you, you went to. 
So we went to the Hardevi uh, by Hardevi by school, right? And uh, everything was taught in Sindhi. And the most important thing was we would sing a little uh, whatever, saying Jagdish Pita Kar Asa Karam Sindhi. Jagdish. Can you Pita. sing it in Sindhi or say it in Sindhi, whatever you prefer? That's okay. Jagdish Pita Kar Ahro Karam Shal Gandhi Asanjo Amar Rahe. Oh. Daddy, just a few months, we didn't realize partition was coming like that. Right. Daddy, uh, who was the, uh, in the college teaching what? mathematics. He, okay, mathematics professor. PJ is in college. Um, he uh, was invited by a government office to be their statistician on a temporary basis, few months or whatever, you know, no time was given. But we didn't think that daddy would leave teaching and join this forever. We thought this would be a temporary, temporary. job. So he went there and he did whatever statistics work he had to do. And Where? then uh, in the government college in Karachi. In Karachi, okay. So then soon thereafter, a few months thereafter, partition was declared. We didn't leave Karachi before partition. We stayed on. And uh, I was, uh, the Sindhi school was closed. And daddy had to take me, uh, send me to a convent where my English language was not good enough. And in my class, the girls would laugh at uh, my grammar. Mm -hmm. So I would come home in the school bus with tears in my eyes. Mm -hmm. And daddy would say that I cannot let Chamu cry every day like this. So we'll go. Uh, where next do you want me to go? <coughs> school. Yeah, I know that, uh, you know, you had a very strong association with the peer in Sindh. So I want to hear about who he was and what it was like when you visited his village. You're talking about the, my Guruji. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, my father was a Sufi. Mm. Bharat Kirtlani was a Sufi. Yes. Uh, and our guru was uh, lived in a little village in, in the interiors of Sin. And we used to uh, go there to pay our uh, respects to him. And uh, he had, to his uh, devotees, he had taught a method of meditation. So we would all not, I was still too young, but later on I too became. Uh, but the devotees were taught how to meditate. So, uh, and he, to me, what I can remember of him, he was like a magician. You know, the kind of things they could achieve like this. Not, not, uh, I mean, I don't know how to describe it, but. You thought about something at home in the night and in the morning, there would be a message from him to say, your work will be done. Wow. So miracles, basically, I think they call them miracles. It's miracle. Well, I don't know what the word is, but, uh, you know, it's kind of, uh, I don't know. What was his name, uh, Shamlu? I'm trying to think. Okay, never mind. Let me look. Let me also Nasir. think. Nasir Fakir. Nasir Fakir. Nasir Fakir. Ja Jalal. Jalalani. Jalalani. Jalalani was a kind of area where he came from. Ah, uh, okay. So and we used to visit him. I go to the interiors of the village, so not frequently, but 
once in a while i remember having gone with mummy and daddy to the jalalani it was called jalalani sharif the area okay so sai nasir fakir sai nasir fakir jalal okay and uh, how did you travel to go there by train um, by train we would go by train and we would get down and to this interiors of the village there was no other form of uh, traffic and transport had, so we had to get on to the camel back wow and from the train to the village to his particular area we had to go by camel back <laughs> we rather enjoyed it children particularly i would sit with daddy i would sit with daddy and indu and gul would sit with mom <laughs> and what was the village like ah uh, well i can't describe the whole village but there was a canal with water flooding and we would go there and little um, bartans and bring fresh water and uh, where sai ji was there was a huge central kind of stage platform about 2 feet high okay pakka you know not of wood or anything but of cemented uh, whatever and there were a couple of rooms there and sainji would go and relax there in the afternoon or whatever and sleep at night and we he would come out when it was not too sunny there was a tree in between or in the center and he would sit there and we would all sit around him you know people would sing bhajan and uh, he would give his uh, he would talk to us about what good life is all about were there others or were you the only ones no no there were others so, so a lot or uh, i can't say a lot or not but uh, there were others and what so would was around this little not little large platform stage kind of stage kind of it was huge uh, there was a lane going around and on the other side of the lane were little little uh, rooms where people could stay or something so did you stay in one of those little rooms we stayed somewhere i can't remember exactly where but we did stay very up three four time i can't remember but and what was the routine like when you were there no routine you had to get up in the morning earlyish and sit and meditate that was right. the only okay only routine and he gave us a kind of a manner of meditation okay which you were required to follow and any other practices that uh, he uh, you did there while you were there no the only thing was think of the lord all the time he wouldn't say think of me no he would say think of the lord what was the word he used when he said think of the lord because he wouldn't have used a word like lord no of course not allah and uh, uh, so then you'd come back and you know shamdu i remember you once telling me about how when the when there you were your family was at so scared when partition was happening and you were you were fear, fearing attack and by a miracle you were saved so uh let's go there let's go there to that point so we daddy as i said daddy didn't want to be parachi because of his guruji and he put me into a convent um, because the sindhi school had shut down 
I need to ask you this. You know, you're calling him a Guruji. Is there another word that you used in Sindh? Let me come to that. Let me come. Right. Sign, sign. Sign. You, you said you did sign, say. Okay. Sign. Mm. okay. Um, so what was the question? Uh, so you uh, you were saying your father didn't want to leave and he put you in a convent. Hmm. So the convent, I would go to the class and I was told to read a sentence. And I read it very badly because I was not used to English speaking and all that. And I didn't know enough words. My vocabulary was very poor. And uh, so uh, when I came into the bus, the girl behind me would pull my choti and say, why are you here? Go to your country. Why are you here? Go to your country. And I'd come back crying and daddy would say, I can't let my daughter cry like this. So this, by this time, it was about middle of September. And uh, 14th of August was, the, you know, in Pakistan. Yeah. So then he gave up his uh, job and uh, we came by ship to uh, Bombay. Now, we had a whole, a whole house full of furniture, beautiful, full, full mirrored cupboards. You know, so we couldn't bring any of that. Nothing at all, because it was post-partition. If he had done it before the partition, daddy would have been able to bring some furniture. You know, you know uh, Shamlu, uh, I think we've skipped the most important thing. So let's go back there. Uh, what I said is that, you know, there was this point where you had a miracle and you were saved. So let's go back to the point when it was 14th of August. And what you saw that day, and then what happened after that? Yeah, so 14th of August, we saw Lord and Lady Mountbatten. Now, this was a wall. My house was here, Sindh Assembly was here, and there was a little drive in along the wall. So, did they have a celebration throughout the city for the 14th of August? Not, uh, I don't know everywhere else, but there was definitely a celebration in the Sin Assembly. Right. There, there, there was a huge lawn like that, and it was full of various people with bugles and so on. And Lord and Lady Mountbatten, along the wall, they came in in, in a black chariot with white horses. So they came right up to the Sindh Assembly and there was a red carpet along the Sindh Assembly. So they You could see up. all this? I could see it from my balcony. So we couldn't go to the balcony because daddy was a bit afraid that something might happen. So we had a, a, a door with glass panels looking into the balcony. So we stood behind the door and we could look into the Sindh Assembly. So we saw uh, this chariot coming in, stopping at the red carpet, and Jinnah and his sister Fatima, they come up to the chariot, welcome Lord and Lady Mountbatten, and um, the bugles blow in the entire garden. They salute or whatever. Wow. So you saw this historic moment. I absolutely saw it. Yes. And, and not only that, then they turn around, go inside. There was a dome. The Sindh Assembly has a dome like that. So under the dome, there is this door and they go inside the door and everything is quiet for a minute. Not minute, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I don't know what. Later on, I was told that they were signing some kind of document. Uh, then they come out and the bugling goes up again and a green flag goes up on the dome. Wow. The first time the flag is hoisted and you saw it. Mm. So that's beautiful. 
Yeah, and again, on the left side where the um, road was, people start, the movement was uh, not normal. It became very... So, Shamlu, you mentioned that your dad was scared. So there was an, uh, that he didn't want you to step onto the balcony because he didn't know what might happen. So there was a certain fear in the atmosphere. But while the, there was a carriage and, you know, while these dignitaries were actually there, nothing was going to happen. No, not uh, during that time, post that time. After they left, after the ceremonies were completed. Yeah, yeah. Then? Yeah. And then, then the um, people did start throwing stones at each other. And on a little distance away from our front, there was a wall here and there was a wall there. The Sindh Assembly was there. On that other side, some people from the Assembly lived there. Okay. See what I mean? Uh, and... We could see that they were going out and bringing, whether it was silver or silver plated, I don't know, uh, um, trays and teapots and, and their families would come pick it up and take it inside. Uh, and uh, this went on till a little later, people started fighting. Stones were thrown at each other and this kind of thing and Mukha Mari sub which started happening. You saw and it? I saw it. Mm. On the left of me. Sindh Assembly, may I can't remember, but I, on the roadside um, and in the front where there was this compound of uh, the residences of the you know, people who worked in the Sindhu family, I could see Mara Mari there. And then? And then it just went on. And then I remember, I can't 100% sure, I remember that uh, the police came. Mm. They came into our compound as well. One or two people, and the other people stayed on the road where all this Mara Mari was taking, and they tried to uh, fasten everything down. And then after that, Daddy didn't let us stand in the balcony at all. We were put in our bedroom. Did you? Uh, did your uh, uh, family or did the neighbors? Did they face any threats from these people? Yes. Yes, people were, we were in our first floor uh, place with the balcony and the bedrooms and all that. Um, and uh, there were, before all this started actually, there were two or three gundas with um, pistols and bandooks and so on saying, wait till this is over and we'll show you what we want. How scary then? Then, um, then we just, then soon thereafter, the, what I can remember is that there was a lot of police which quietened all the Mara Mari on the road. So there was no direct threat there. And we were staying inside our uh, rooms and Maybe later on, when the whether it was the same day or the next day, I can't remember, when all the threats and everything was quietened, Daddy actually took a cycle and went around the nearby areas where our uh, relatives used to live and some people who were still there. Uh, and uh, okay. to try and see if everybody was all right. Right. And the two or three people that he were nearby who he could visit, they seemed to be to have been okay. Mm -hmm. Before this happened, 
our peer sent somebody with a big bandook who came down and he said uh, rupchan don't worry nothing will happen to you we've come from jalalani we are going to stay here and nothing will happen to you. and we lived in a kind of a complex where there were four or five uh, independent houses and uh, everybody was who was there was very scared and after they saw this and uh, they everybody kind of appreciated the fact that this man had come and that everything would be all right and nothing happened in our complex but eventually everybody made arrangements to leave because yeah. a lot of people there was one parsi family which did not uh and there was one other uh, block i can remember uh, and they also did not and we left soon thereafter so how was the resettlement for your family the resettlement for them the adults was okay but the children schools not welcoming the children in the school were not welcoming us so to begin with because we couldn't speak english and they were all convents sounds like a difficult time but you've done so well shamlu you know there's one more thing i want you to tell us about before i let you go and that's the trip you made because i know your dad just couldn't stay away from his uh, peer so you went back right so tell me tell me about uh, what it was like going back what did you do and how was it to begin with daddy had some sindhi friend in karachi so we stayed with them for a couple of days and then traveled by train to sainji basically the prob- uh, question of going to sindhi was to see sainji's village you know and um, to be there with him so he was alive at that time so we went there and that is the time when i got my nam meditation he taught me how to meditate at that time about 55 54 55 i can't remember so they so were about 16 years old at that time it was 9 plus 5 yeah 14 years 14, 14. Yeah. so then we came to bombay and bombay uh, we got a little in delhi we got a lovely um, barsati no wait shamlu you were telling me about sindh you got your naam in when uh, when you were there and uh, what else about that trip nothing much we just went to sign his uh, i remember village. you went to see your house once you went to see your old home not this time not that time later perhaps yeah so what happened maybe then maybe this time maybe this time yeah we just went to see and the no that was much later much later we so went what, when was it and uh, what happened uh we tried to go into the house uh, and there was a darwan at the gate and he didn't let us go in he said i'll have to talk to the people inside i'll have to call of them course. yeah it was their home so i didn't want to go inside i didn't want to be interviewed by somebody and so we said okay we we saw it from outside outside the gate but we didn't go inside exactly so uh, and then we uh, came to bombay and daddy took up his as it happened he had a handloom some kind of a handloom job which uh, what i am involved in with kanta and everything yeah. so uh, then we lived in uh, i lived in bombay from 1957 to 62 62 i got married and came to calcutta and what about your days as a model that was bombay I, don't ask me about it. i did a lot of uh, naughty things meaning went out and this and that and daddy would say Okay, Nandi Vani, Ghani Bajayin, you know that kind of thing. What time? What time will you be back? 
and don't be late. I don't want you to come back after 9.30 or something like that. And uh, so uh, did I tried to study for my MSc also, but there was no time. So I gave it up. I was too involved in media and things. So modeling was my favorite passion. And I did, uh, I was on the cover of uh, East Weekly. And I was on the back of the East Weekly with Katao. I've seen page. that. Yeah. I have seen that. Yeah, lovely. So it's been a, a wonderful, uh, uh, you know, very, very exciting and interesting life. Do you still practice that meditation? Yes. Yes. That's the only meditation. Yes. So, uh, I think my sister perhaps probably doesn't know this meditation. Mm. She thinks about Sainji. Yeah, yeah. So she but also has the connection with Sainji. Yeah. But my brother has become a Christian. Okay. Do you have any connection with Sindh today? We, yeah. My, I have a huge connection with Sindh. About 24 years ago, I started writing maths textbooks with Oxford University Press in Delhi. Now, Delhi has an OUP in Karachi as well. Right. So it was actually the lady from Karachi who had come to Delhi, and I don't know how she heard about me and so on. And she rang me up and said, come to Delhi, I want to meet you. I went there. She was the one who started me on writing that textbook. And now the textbooks in India have stopped because they've got another uh, lady who's writing a writer. Mm. Uh, yeah. Well, after 22, 23 years. But Pakistan, my royalty is still coming from Pakistan. They're the only country which is publishing my books and using them. So you're still connected to Sindh in a very, very lovely way. Yeah, absolutely. That's wonderful, Shamlu. On this lovely note, let's stop this uh, uh, you know, discussion. Thank you so much. 